Gary is the designer and author of the Skill Builders Oracle Database Manager, and he'll be able to answer questions that I'm sure you'll have. John Watson is a Oracle Certified Master DBA, so um, any of the real tough DBA questions, uh, John can back us up on that. Just a quick historical note, Skill Builders Oracle Database Manager, or SBODM as we call it, used to be called in its first incarnation, Alato. So in some of the code, some of the documentation, some of the videos that we've made, you may still see the name Alato baked in there, but for sure it's now SBODM. So what I'd like to do today, or what uh, we'd like to do, myself and Gary Law and John Watson, is uh, tell you what SBODM is, and why you might want to use it. Uh, we'll also, of course, uh, do some demonstrations. That's the main part of our presentation here today. And maybe talk a little bit about what's next, tell you how to get support for SBODM and answer any questions that you may have. So first of all, um, what is it? Uh, it's an Oracle database management tool. Uh, it is written in Apex. Uh, it is free and it is open source. So show you the download page or the SBODM page that we have here on our website. And uh, this is accessible from skillbuilders.com slash SBODM. And uh, it's got a few tabs here, as you can see, just a general description of what SBODM is. You can test drive it without even downloading it by logging in here. Note the uh, credentials are case sensitive, so use the uppercase demo and demo. And the download is right here. There's a free download. Just enter some basic information and it will download a zip file that has the source code, as I said, in that zip file. And the fourth tab shouldn't be overlooked. Um, you can ask us questions. We've answered a lot of technical questions, installation type questions. Um, people have let us know of bugs in this forum. So that's a good way to communicate with us about SBODM. I also use Twitter to uh, announce certain things, like you might have found uh, information on this particular webinar uh, on Twitter. I, I tend to use the hashtag SBODM, and actually SBODM has its own uh, Twitter space, and, and uh, it's not tremendously active. We hope to get that uh, corrected as time goes by. It is, as uh, we mentioned, written at Apex, so uh, by nature it is very lightweight, uh, and it is very straightforward Apex implementation. There is not JavaScript and, and other things that you'll need to know in order to make modifications and enhancements that you would like to make. And uh, both Linux and Windows platforms are supported. SBODM has some uh, unique administrative features. And uh, you know basically we're comparing it to other free uh, admin or database management tools when we say there are some unique features. Um, it does have the ability to uh, view and set thresholds and alerts and receive notifications if those thresholds are met or exceeded. And we'll take a look at that here today. Lots of scheduler notifications, so you can schedule exports, you can schedule jobs in general, PL SQL blocks, uh, OS procedures, uh, procedures, of course. You can schedule jobs, you can schedule backups, you can schedule exports, imports, and receive notifications when they finish successfully or not successfully or don't complete. So there's lots of notifications that you can get based on the jobs or the jobs that you uh, schedule through SBODM. You can also schedule Apex exports. And when we say Apex, Apex exports, you can schedule not only schema exports, as you would expect, but also Apex application exports. So for example, you might want to schedule a daily or nightly Apex export, both schema and application, where you have a, a, a daily or nightly backup. Uh, you do have the source code is open source, so you can add whatever features you want. And of course, why use it? Well, um, maybe you don't have a large budget for a uh, paid for tool, uh, and you'd like a nice, free, easy to use tool. Of course, you will require Apex installed. You know, when you compare it to some of the other things you can get with Oracle, uh, you know, Oracle Enterprise Manager has a large footprint. It is a, a great tool uh, as part of grid control, but 
it, it is a, a large footprint and really meant for managing many resources, whereas SBODM is really meant to manage one database, and that is the database in which you install it. So for a small environment where you may be managing one or two or three databases, SBODM is great. Can't connect to remote databases to manage them, so you'd have to install it two or three or four times, however many databases you might, would like to manage with SBODM. Compared to Enterprise Manager Express freebie that comes with all editions of Oracle, the, the problem here is that the full function version needs Flash, and, and Flash has been sunsetted, sunsetted by Adobe. Uh, so that's going away, and if you want to use the Flash-free version of Enterprise Manager Express, it, it, you can't do anything with it other than monitor uh, things about your database. You can't manage anything, users or storage or anything. Not very useful there. As I mentioned before, SBODM has some administrative features that SQL Dev doesn't. It doesn't mean to say that SQL Dev isn't a great tool. It is a great tool, and you might think of them as a good complement for each other. SQL Dev, uh, you know, has a great schema editor, an object editor, and then that hierarchy, hierarchical display on the left side where you can drill down and do things with the objects. But SBODM doesn't uh, really compare in that area. But then again, SBODM has some administrative features that SQL Dev doesn't. I mentioned them a moment ago, and we'll see more of them as we go. It is something that runs on any edition of the database, and prize, standard edition, express edition, as long as the database is 12C and above for the current release of SBODM. Requires Apex 18.2 and above, and there's a installation for Linux, and there's an installation for Windows. A rack is not supported, and as I mentioned, managing remote databases is not supported. Pluggable database, CDB, is supported. So multi-tenant is supported with the current release of SBODM. Let's take a look at the tool. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. And when we log in, we're presented with the home page, if you will. The home page that you get out of the box is really an advertisement for skill builders. So clearly you may want to adjust that. But let's take, a, let's take a closer look. First of all, the banner at the top tells you, of course, what release you're running. As you can see up here, version 2.1.0 has a link to bring you to our Twitter page, our Twitter home, tells you who you're logged in as, has a change password function, and a help function. Before I get to the help function, let's look at the banner bar right below the title bar. It tells us about the installation identifier, in this case, case SBODM-ATEST, set an installation time. That'll be useful for you because your notifications, your emails are identified by that character string, in this case SBODM-ATEST. You have, might have multiple installations of SBODM, very likely if you're managing multiple databases, so that's, that's handy. Your host name is next, instance name, CDB test in this case, database name, PDB name, and then of course, the database product on which we are running, in this case, Oracle Database 19C Standard Edition 2. I mentioned the help screen. This is gonna come up to us several times. The help system is very robust and it is modifiable. So I click on the help button and <clears throat> it gives me an email address support at skillbuilders.com if you would like skillbuilders personnel to help you with SBODM or with your Oracle database, you can send us an email. Uh, this is a very robust help system. We'll look at it a couple of times as we go through the product. And over here, you can drill down to uh, different areas of the product to get different information. But importantly, it is, as most things with SBODM, you can make changes. So just clicking the edit button, and you can make additions or subtractions to the support text. Put your own notes in there, anything that is specific to your database, your version of SBODM. Now let's get to the dashboard. Now the dashboard has quite a bit of information of it, information on it, and this information that you receive here, of course, is customizable as well, as we'll see in a moment. But before we go too far, Right below the installation identifier, the banner here, we said that we see that there is a red line across the top of the SBODM dashboard. That indicates to us that there are unacknowledged events or alerts that have occurred. 
And indeed, when we scroll down, we can see that there is an alert in the alert log that's being presented to us that we haven't done anything about yet. There are system threshold alerts. In this case, it looks like blocking is occurring that haven't been tended to. There's even an application error. So there's lots of things here that cause that red bar to come up. Uh, obviously telling the administrator uh, that something needs to be done to make this database healthy again. At the top, we have different metrics that we can select. These are all the normal, if you will, Oracle database metrics available to us. By default, we present the CPU utilization, host CPU utilization, physical reads per, per second, and logical reads per second. But you can choose any three metrics you want. And of course, if you're an Apex developer, you can easily switch what these are, logons per transaction or whatever. Now, this is not a, a necessarily a, a tuning tool. There are some great uh, tuning tools out there on the market, um, but, it, but it is a, a good uh, uh, way to collect some basic information about the health of your database. One thing I had not mentioned before is in the, uh, above the banner here, there's a button that says customize. So if I press customize, unfortunately, there's a bit of a bug in this version and it's not working, nothing happens. But if I come to the bottom of the screen and I use this customize link, what happens is a dialog comes up that allows me to select or deselect areas of uh, the dashboard to display. Uh, if I don't want to see some, some particular information, I don't want to see about application errors, for example, I click it and deselect it. If I don't want to see information about any of this information, I click it and deselect it, apply the changes, and the dashboard becomes a much more uh, succinct display of information, maybe tailored to exactly what I want to display. For now, I'll go back and re-enable all of the areas of information so we can learn about them. So uh, we're seeing uh, an alert from the alert log. Uh, it happens to be a uh, Aura 600. It looks like it was a test error message that we set up. Um, tells you where that alert log is, right here. And let's see how that's, that's managed. <clears throat> Oops, I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? I come down here to manage a little bit about the application and what the application can display or does for me. And in this particular case, I want to look at the alert log filters. And you can see in the alert log filters, which control what gets displayed on the dashboard, any alert log that contains ORA dash will be displayed on the dashboard. And there's some other filters. In this case, they are does not contain. So you can choose any uh, uh, combination you want of the line in the alert log contains or does not contain and any filter you want. The filter is a free form field, so you can put anything you want here. It might be custom to your database. Put a description over here, save that change, and then if the alert log subsequently generates a row or a line that contains this character string, it will be displayed on the dashboard and needs to be tended to. Remember that red line that we saw? You'd have to clear it in order for or the red line to go away. Gary, is there anything um, we should add about the alert log on the dashboard or the alert log management on the application side of the fence? I would like to uh, say that in all my experience with uh, Oracle, uh, if there is anything really seriously wrong with the database, it will produce a uh, message in the alert log. And that's why I think this is very important. And we shouldn't forget either that as well as displaying it on the dashboard, uh, you will receive a notification per email, which is, uh, I think, a very important feature. Here's an example email that I got from SBODM uh, just about an hour ago. And uh, we, we saw that the, the uh, installation ID in the banner when we started our demonstration, there it is there, and uh, tells you whether it's uh, what type of message it is and, and whether it's considered critical or not, and the reason down here. System threshold alerts. Uh, so one of the things that uh, 
that's really nice about SPODM is you have access to the Oracle threshold and can set specific uh, boundaries and have SPODM react if those boundaries are met. These thresholds, as a DBA, as you probably recognize, uh, here we're saying if the, any table space is certain percentage of full, in this case 85% full, we want an alert to be raised of some sort, a notification to be raised and an alert to be sent, a notification to be sent. Pardon me, I'll get that straight, all right? Let's take away this filter and we'll see. You probably recognize this. Maybe you want to monitor the host CPU and set a threshold on a certain percentage of the host three P CPU. The thing to remember that uh, most of the uh, metrics, for most of the metrics, you can set threshold, thresholds, but not for all. And uh, the one you uh, uh, checked was one that you cannot set a threshold for. Uh, but if you were to go to a, a, uh, to a metric, for instance, that commits per second, then you can see a tab uh, where you can actually set the threshold. So I've got uh, five commits per second as a warning and, and 10 as a critical value. So I'll go ahead and, and, and set that threshold. So Gary, how do I get back to the original display where only the metrics with threshold set were shown? In the center, there's a drop down where it says only metrics where thresholds are set. Mm -hmm. There we go, beautiful. And you can see my commit here, which I set just a moment ago. If a session uh, exceeded that commit rate, we would see it up here in the uh, system threshold alerts and I would get an email. Now, as it stands, we do have a couple of alerts here and this is on blocking. And we can see that there's a couple of blocking events going on. So one is being blocked by a session with a serial number of 2870. So let's go down here and see the current sessions and see if we can find one with 2870. Sure enough, it's right here. Looks like it's a, a session started by Gary. And fair to say that since this is a blocking session, I'd like to kill it. And I'd like for all of you to recognize that this is yet another feature that is built into SBODM that doesn't always uh, appear, this feature, in some of your other free tools. The Enterprise Manager Express doesn't have this ability. Gary, you okay to kill this session? Yes. Okay. And there we go, it's been marked for kill. Looks like another session is kicked off, which is causing a warning to occur on the commits. So Gary had queued up a, a, a little PL SQL routine to stress the commits there against the uh, threshold that I had set. And sure enough, um, I just got an email that the metric user commits per second, the threshold uh, has, been, has been reached, and I got an email telling me so just a couple seconds ago. Okay. Gary, how often does the uh, dashboard refresh? Every five seconds. Great. And we've got another, uh, let's go uh, 23027. We'll look for that session. It's in sequential order here, so it's not too hard to find. There's 23027. Go ahead and kill that session. And 2870. Did we kill that one already? I think I killed that one already, so it's not here. So there's a bit of cleaning up. Uh, the blocking sessions are disappearing, as you can see down here. The dashboard will eventually clear itself of these, these blocks. Instance parameters can be viewed here on the dashboard as well. Uh, no change here. Backups, uh, think RMAN, of course. So not only can we view the RMAN configuration, but importantly, we can manage the RMAN configuration. So first of all, what we're seeing up here is the non-default RMAN configuration values. So the retention policy has been set to a recovery window of 10 days. That's not the default, so it shows up here at the top. Table spaces included, excluded from a full backup would be shown here. And if you want to see the entire RMAN configuration, you can see it under the show all button. And importantly, you can manage the RMAN configuration. I always set up auto backup of my control file, things like that. Set a redundancy policy or a recovery window policy all the standard RMAN configuration settings that you are already familiar with. 
backup sets, policies, everything. Manage the backup schedule. Notice the pencil on the left side is the ability to edit. This is our backup job, our full backup job here. All of the things that you would like to include, including notifications. So here's the list of emails, email addresses, that will get a notification or an email when this job completes. So fantastic way uh, to uh, manage your RMAN schedule. I want to get, uh, perhaps I want to get an email only if the job fails. The job scheduler knows if a job has failed and can show us that information or email us in, in the event that occurs. Schedule itself, start date, end date, frequency, and specify the days by checking the boxes that you want this job to run. We saw the notification, so this is a subset of what we saw before. Gary, can you uh, give us any additional background on this or insight into the backup capability? If we had to have a quick look at the uh, backup logs to view the job itself. If we look on the, uh, exactly there, if we look at the job itself, we can see what is actually being done. We scroll down, we can see the actual uh, OS executable. That's This is the script that is uh, actually uh, the bash shell script that's actually executed. And if we go further down, we see the uh, the command file. Yeah, there's there's the connect to your, your database. And, and if we see the command file, this is uh, the command file that is generated by the items in the form for managing the uh, schedule. So this is the command code is generated. And of course, you could have different uh, backup schedules, uh, either a full backup, for instance, or you could have a separate schedule for a uh, level zero uh, or a level one backup. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, these are the command codes that are generated for, from the form. I thought it was. And this is uh, the same method is used in uh, all the other utilities. So if we have a see this at the, the uh, OS uh, script file and the command file, this is very uh, similar to the way it's done for ex uh, data pump export and import, for example. Right. Uh, Dave, if you go back now and actually look at the log file to see the uh, results of the uh, results of the script, go back to go to the logs again. And on the right hand side, you can actually see the, uh, the backup log. Yeah, so it's, it's maintained a permanent record. Uh, all, all the pieces are there. There's nothing fleeting. Uh, so not only is the job construction uh, built and shown to you and saved for you, but here the, the log is of course kept as well. Uh, Gary, a question to you. I noticed that um, you put in there a validate backup. Was that a selection that, that was chosen or was that uh, this validation step that you, you put in here? Was that chosen by the uh, user of the form? Yes. Fantastic. So in similar fashion, we can schedule exports and, and also schedule imports. Here's a an, an export log. Web schedule shown here. So a, a really nice, easy way to uh, be able to schedule jobs and receive notifications or emails about the completion of those jobs. As any management tool, uh, it probably should. Um, database users can be managed here. Uh, you'll, you'll notice we have a, a Bob test user here. We can reset a password, assign roles assign system privileges, provide table space quota. Database schemas. Now, uh, as we said before, um, this is not meant to be a schema editor or an object editor. SQL Dev does a wonderful job here. 
So it's an overlap and not meant to be competing with that, uh, but it does have this kind of capability. You can reorganize any objects you have here. Okay, and uh, as a database management tool, it should allow you at least to uh, view storage, and you'll see that it allows us to manage storage as well. Uh, and Gary, what about ASM? ASM is uh, supported, but we do not have ASM on this system. That's why uh, you do, uh, we do not see the menu item. Right. And if ASM was on this system, would we be able to manage a disk group, for example? Yes. yes. Excellent. So let's uh, drill down on table spaces, see what's cooking there. Here's all our table spaces all the information that you would expect to see about a table space, the data file connected with it, the ability to add a data file, and the table space usage. Oops, I thought I pressed enter there. Shows it over time, which is, I think, very clever. Get a feel of in what direction it's going and how fast the usage of that table space. Data file management, shows all our data files here. Again, the ability to add a data file. And even some control for the flash recovery area. Uh, excuse me, I call it flash. I should say fast recovery area. Gary, why don't you talk us through this? Uh, the Apex export schedules. I... If we select one of, the, uh, one of the schedules, we can have a look at. Okay. Okay, the identification, obviously, it's just to give it a name and to see what it's actually doing. Uh, we can uh, choose to export all workspaces or just one workspace. Mm -hmm. And within one workspace, one or more applications. Oh, very nice. Define the, define the retention days. And if we should also export the passing schema at the same time. This, I think, is interesting in a development environment where you could uh, make changes to a uh, to an application, and if we're doing the right thing in Apex, all our business logic is in uh, package procedures and functions. So, with this uh, possibility to export export the passage schema, uh, we can, for instance, um, uh, schedule an export. Uh, after working hours, so that uh, we have a, a good a good uh, a good backup of any changes that have been made on a certain day. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And uh, yeah, and the uh, the schedule is uh, it's uh, the same as all the other utilities. Really nice. We are we are of course using DBMS scheduler to do all of this work. It's a uh, uh, it is the core of the uh, of this system is uh, DBMS scheduler. That's right. And we also have the export log. If we have a quick look at the export log, this uh, this is from excuse me from a previous uh, export. But this is uh, uh, what we will see in the uh, in the log file. The uh, exports are done. Uh, these uh, these exports were done before the uh, application was reinstalled. I see. I see. Okay, great. Uh, Gary, do you you get the same uh, the same email capability? Uh, email e email the administrator if the uh, job finished, if the job failed with errors, that type of thing. Yes. Fantastic. The scripts here. What you can. Uh, create uh, create scripts and keep them in a repository. Mm -hmm. uh, just as the uh, the scheduler jobs. If you go to the scheduler jobs, I haven't got any there, but you can uh, say uh, create. There's a create button. <coughs> so you can actually run a uh, a scheduled PLC block. Yes, or a stored procedure or an OS executable. Wonderful. The OS executable would be a shell script, Gary? It would be a shell script, which of course it could be a uh, bash for, for a Linux system. It could be a bash script. It could be a 
a seashell script, it could be a Perl script, so any any scripting language that I can uh, call what about, from. What about PowerShell? PowerShell on the Windows side. Yes, anything that can run from the uh, from the command line be used in the OS executable. Fantastic. I'd like to bring everybody's uh, attention back to the, the help for a moment. The help is context sensitive, so it goes to the portion of the help based on what screen you're on, and you know there there is help for each of these functions. Let's take a quick look at some of the things we can do in the application. This helps the construction and hierarchies involved in the help system. So not only can you directly edit, as I showed you before, some of the text in the help system, the help system, help system itself is extensible. Yes, it is not uh, simply Apex help, pay, uh, page help. It is a hierarchy that you can link it to one or more pages because uh, help per single page, uh, I don't think is very uh, uh, is very a good idea. And that's why it has its own hierarchy and the hierarchy can be linked to the hierarchy of the fun uh, functions of uh, SBODM. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Uh, similar question, Gary, this help system looks like we could plop this into almost any application. Uh, is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. These are um, application level configuration parameters, Gary? Most of the uh, configuration parameters, uh, they are configured uh, on, as post installation tasks. Great. The application has its own users, which you can see here. So these are not necessarily database users, correct? They are not database users, they're application users. Yeah. Can these users be used for another Apex application, Gary? Yes, it's a the user and role system that's used here can be used by other Apex applications with a simple, uh, if you, you can create uh, as many roles as you want. And uh, for all, all those Apex users, it's simply making a, a authorization scheme, which uh, does a, a function lookup to the uh, users and roles tables. So very simple implementation. Very nice. All right, we talked about these alert log filters earlier. Is this the, uh, the errors we would see on the dashboard? Yes, these are the uh, application errors the, uh, uh, for the application itself. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this should never happen. Right. Uh, these are the internal application errors, should never happen. And this is also a, a part of the, the uh, application that can also be used by uh, other systems. So these are modules, the help, the error logs, and the user role management is something that can be used for other Apex applications. I just wanted to point that out. I might manage. Uh, I might mention that some of the attendees um, might have the embedded license with Oracle Corporation. In other words, you have the right to embed the Oracle database engine in a product that you are shipping as a uh, software vendor. You may not have the right to embed, let's say, uh, enterprise managers. So your customers have a way to manage the database which you are shipping with your product. SVODM can fill that gap as well. And Gary, this is uh, internals. Um... Well, the internals, uh, how the, uh... Uh, how this how the system actually works? Uh, most uh, most of the uh, utilities use OS scripts, and they are in what are called the job library. And yeah, I think maybe that's something for another day. How one can use this? It use a it uses a uh, variable substitution method, very similar to uh, to Apex templates to actually uh, adjust the scripts uh, by plugging in the page uh, items into the scripts. It's a very similar method to uh, Apex, uh, Apex templates. But I think that's something for, for, uh, for another day maybe. Uh, how can I easily uh, add my own utilities? It is, it is also in the help, 
uh, but I would say it's rather brief, and of course, I can uh, I can go into much more detail right. if uh, if anyone is really uh, you know interested in going into that detail. Well, to that point, um, you know, remember everybody, there is several ways to communicate with us and Gary, and uh, one is with the uh, forum, this little Q and A area here on the website. You can always uh, reach us via Twitter and uh, use the hashtag SBODM, and that helps, or reference the SBODM Twitter profile. Unfortunately, somebody already had SBODM, so we have SB underscore ODM. Anyway, those are good ways to, to, uh, to communicate with us, and we, we hope you do. Um, suggestions for new features, maybe new features that you're adding. So, you know what it is? It's an easy to use uh, database manager or administration tool. Uh, you know what it's not. Uh, we don't claim it to be a, a performance tuning tool, uh, but uh, it does have a lot of great functions, certainly for free. Uh, can be a good, great complement to something like SQL Dev. Um, certainly can easily replace uh, the Express edition of Enterprise Manager, EM Express. Uh, uh, and a rack is not supported, so uh, something that uh, you either have to build yourself or wait for wait for us to do. So Skill Builders is uh, your vendor for things like database administration services, Apex application development. You see a prime example of both of them right here. A great understanding of Oracle database administration. A great understanding of Oracle Apex application design and development. So we hope that you'll keep us in mind if you have needs in either area. Many of you know us from 